So obviously, uh, China, Taiwan, the United States, tensions are getting really, really high. And I'm curious if you if you're paying attention to that. And if so, what is your opinion on whether America should be all in on defending Taiwan and in pushing back against China? Or if you have a different view of how we should handle China? Yeah, you ask a great question. And just so you know, I'm a guy who has been to China many times and have lots and lots of good friends in China that are Chinese citizens. And so I think I understand it from within China, as well as from the U.S. strategic uh, perspective. Look, America is the spokesman for freedom around the world. We're not the only, but we must be the primary spokesman for freedom around the world. So if t Taiwan is saying, I want to be free, and China is saying, we're not going to allow you to be free, then America has a responsibility to stand up and to speak on behalf of the Taiwanese. Where that responsibility goes and how far that responsibility lasts, the national defense experts will argue about that until they're blue in the face. But I will say this. Um, I know China from within, as well as I can see from a U.S. warrior's perspective, China's uh, threat and their growing influence around the world. And China is very much becoming a world superpower. Just like when I joined the army, it was Russia, well, it was the Soviet Union versus America. And the next big one is going to be America fighting the Russia or the Soviet Union. Well, China is moving in that direction and the U.S. has to be very, very careful because if you're heading towards a second Cold War, the only reason the last Cold War didn't become a full on war is we were really careful with diplomacy. So I think we here's a long answer to a short question. Tread very, very lightly with Taiwan. Um, walk on this one like you're walking on thin ice because i'm not saying we shouldn't be all in for taiwan i'm just saying we need to be really really careful um, about how we handle this because china is definitely a near peer and on their way to becoming a superpower that's a good answer that's i think that's an answer people will be able to sink their teeth into so i got two regular questions left and then i always end on a very very fun one we take one from the fans so what's the biggest misconception in your mind about what what's the biggest misconception civilians have about war that's not even close to what the reality is? Yeah, <laughs> um, virtually everything that a civilian has in their mind about war is not close to reality. In fact, everything that I as a warrior trained by some of the most experienced warriors in the military had about war wasn't the case until I got there and saw it firsthand. And it's almost impossible to help somebody understand what war is really like. There's a book by an author by the last name of Marlantis that describes what it's like to go to war. And that's probably as accurate as anything that I've seen. But even that words on a page just can't do justice to it. Um, so war is moments of intense fear and minutes or months of total boredom. Um, and really, you have these two extremes and not a whole lot in the middle. So that's war in a nutshell. Um, and it's almost impossible to describe to somebody who's not been there. That's fair enough. I, I believe that's a good answer. So this is one uh, we've I've interviewed a lot of Delta Force guys. I since I was a little kid, I've been obsessed with Delta Force. In the movie Black Hawk Down, it looks like the captain, uh, the Ranger captain. There's a couple scenes where he argues with the Delta Force guys, and was the relationship in real life that testy between the two groups, or did you guys get along way better than maybe it was depicted? Yeah. That relationship between him and that unit really was cantankerous uh, a lot more than it needed to be. Um, I think after that, there were some uh, ruffled feathers that finally got smoothed out. Um, but just so that you are aware, David, this is the first time that we've ever been on the target at the same time with each other. Gotcha. We always train together, but they do their thing over there. We do our thing over here. We just happen to do it in the same place at the same time, but we're not in the same building at the same time. And now for the first time ever, we're fighting in the same building at the same time. And we have to figure out how to fight with one another. And just to be honest, man, that was a really, really painful learning process 
once we learned that, and Somalia is the thing that caused us to learn how to fight together, that bond became beautiful. Man, I saw uh, this relationship in Iraq and Afghanistan that would have never been possible if it wasn't for Somalia. But man, it was really, really rough and a lot of ruffled feathers uh, when we were figuring this thing out under fire in Af or in Somalia. Did the did, did the Rangers back then, or, or you served with the Rangers, obviously, in Iraq and Afghanistan, as we talked about, do the Rangers view the Delta guys kind of as like they're he like, are they viewed as like, we want to be those guys? Because that's kind of the sense the movie gives, right? With the Josh Hartnett character, like they're a little bit enamored with them. They think they're the role model. Is that how Rangers view guys that are in Delta? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, especially the the newer Rangers. After a while, after you've had a chance to see how all the rest of the special operations forces work, you start to learn these guys are really, really good at this. These guys are really good at that. We're really good at this. And there's some overlap. But until you get to that point, and by the way, there's no question, these guys are better at this than anybody on the planet. So if you're going to admire somebody who could do this, there's nobody else to admire but these guys. And yeah, I mean, that was the case for me and everybody that I know. And I think it's right. It's it's deservedly so. Awesome. So that unit, which I cannot name, is that good. At what yeah. Point. Yeah. No, no, I maybe I shouldn't have dropped their name. I don't know. But yeah, no, everyone knows who we're, uh, we're talking about. But all right. Last question. Now, this one comes from a fan. OK, I'm going to I'm going to read it to you how it was given me. It's a fun one. Have some fun with it. it is the idea. Um, it's a hypothetical. OK, we need a straight answer. If you're in a helicopter, black, how many guys can fit on a, hel a Black Hawk? The official answer, if you were to ask a Ranger sergeant, is you can always fit one more. It doesn't okay. matter if there's 12 or 200. We can always fit one more. Jump in. OK, so let's say let's for this. Let's say you got 12 guys. Uh, you're flying in a Black Hawk and you go through a time hole to 1943 and you crash land in Germany. You're halfway between Hitler and the Eagle's Nest or safety in Switzerland. Are you and your 12 guys going to try to take out Hitler or are you going to try to make it to Switzerland? What's your answer? That is easy to answer. I'm going to Hitler and I'm going to kill as many Nazis as I can along the way. Because my Ranger squad in 1944 in Nazi Germany is going to do a whole lot of killing before I get to the Eagle's Nest. And to be honest, they don't stand a chance when I get there. That is a great that is a great answer. I actually was debating that with that person who sent me that question. I was like, I'm going to make this the fun one. I always pick one. That was great. But Jeff, I want to um, say thank you. Where can people find you? Like, where, what are your social media handles? Yeah, man, I, I'm all over social media. Uh, you can find me at my website, jeffstrucker.com, um, or on all of the prominent social media platforms. Perfect. So if you guys, uh, hopefully the viewers enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. You can find more of Jeff online. I've seen his Instagram page. He's got a lot of good stuff, a lot of inspiring messages on there. So Jeff... I appreciate you coming in. This has been the first one we've done without kick. And uh, what, a, what a guest to have to kick everything off. Yeah, man. Thanks, David. It's been an honor to be with you.